Greetings, friends. Stephen Badoon here with Israeli News Live. The story of Jesus and Barabbas. Believe it or not, it's actually written in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, in fact, when I found this, I found this not even intending to look uh, for that type of uh, work there. I was actually dealing more along the lines of doing some research on Noah uh, for preparing the message that I did earlier over on iConnectFX.com, Israeli News Live. And as I was working on that, I ran across some issues dealing with the giants and the judgment of the giants. And not only is it recorded about Jesus and Barabbas and the Dead Sea Scrolls, but also about the giants, the fallen, the Nephilim, and not only is it recorded about them and that they would be there even up into the times of Jesus, but even goes further, saying that they would even be in the future. So what I'm about to share with you is beyond anything you could ever imagine, and I'm still working on it, still going through it. Uh, you know, it, as, as we all know, it is a Hebrew document, and this, of course, is just the, uh, the transliteration of the Hebrew uh, laid out, not the actual fragments, of course, that's kind of obvious here, but this is where we're at here. We're in this part of the fragment here, 4Q266, uh, and this is the English version of it. I have not taken the time uh, as of yet to really compare the Hebrew versus the English. That normally yields more information because not all different uh, scholars will, will translate alike. Uh, not that I consider myself necessarily a scholar, but uh, but as if I as I look at it here and and is like verse eighteen, Moshe ve'acharon be'yad sha'ar ha'orim ve'yakum. You know, it all depends on how an individual would translate that. And uh, and if I just were to quickly briefly look at Moses and Aaron uh, by the hand of the princes of the lights of Belial, yeah, it's exactly what it says. Just what I just read there as well. So. Uh, just out of curiosity, but but I'm going to take a little bit of this here with you guys here on Patreon, and I wanted to share with you just some of the English parts of this. Absolutely fascinating, fascinating here. So we are in the Damascus document is where this occurs at, and uh, it's really the language here. Let's see, we're that's page five fifty one. Let me go back up here real quick and back up to page 551. Yeah, because I had gotten way down. I was already doing a lot of the reading of this. And um, and I just want to quickly take a peek here again. Okay, for when they were unfaithful and forsaking him, he hid his face from Israel and from his, from his sanctuary and delivering him up to the sword. But when he remembered the covenant with the forefathers, he saved a remnant. Uh, and, of course, this goes back into the Babylonian captivity. That's what this page is on 551. And uh, let me go back to the photographs. So I just want to make sure I have it open on that, on that document as well. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to take a peek here. Uh, these three right here. Let me blow this up for you so you guys can see this as well on your screen. All right. And we're just going to use, like I said, the English parts of this. If there's for some reason we want to look at the Hebrew, I'll quickly jump over there. Uh, he hid his face from Israel and from his sanctuary and delivered them up to the sword. But when he remembered the covenant with the forefathers, he saved a remnant. Now, this is going back to the times of Jeremiah, or at least they're writing about that time. He hid his face not only from Israel, but also from the sanctuary. In other words, he was not in the Holy of Holies. And he saved a remnant for Israel and did not deliver them up to destruction. In a period of wrath of 390 years after having delivered them up into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. All right. Now hold that thought. We're in, we're, uh, we'd call that verse 6. Of course, it's, it's historical, so it's not biblical in that case. But just so that we go back. Uh, now, I'm not going to use Jeremiah in this case here, but we already know Jeremiah writes about them being delivered up into captivity. 
But as a reminder, I want to jump over here real quick to Ezra. Nehemiah also uh, brings this, this, these things out. And remember that this is when they're getting ready to come back. They've already been there during that time period, the 390 years. And then they find out that they had not separated themselves from the people's lands, doing according to their abominations, that the abominations of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, so on and so forth. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the, notice that, the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. And remember, the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, etc., had already, we know that from the scripture, and I believe that's found in Numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just, I, well, sometimes I forget exact, whoa, goodness, hang on. Uh, chapter, look at 18 real quick. Uh, nope, that's not an 18... Maybe it's in 13. Yeah, here we go. In chapter 13, where they, this is where the spies go to spy out the land, and they find that they saw the Nephilim. See, right there. They saw the Nephilim, and here it is in Hebrew, the Nephilim. And the Nephilim were the sons of Enoch. They're the sons of Enoch. And where it literally says, Minha Nephilim. Now that's not Nephilim in this case here. Nephilim, he is from the fallen angels. All right, Enoch is. Now, what's fascinating, there's people that have disagreed with me on this, but what we have here in the Dead Sea Scrolls also corroborates that information. You're going to see it here. He visited them and caused them to sprout from Israel and from Aaron a shoot of the planting. That's verse 7. All right, let me see. We're at page 551. I want to do something here real quick, though, while we're at it. I, like I said, I haven't actually had the chance to go back in Hebrew and look at this. Uh, there it is right there. Pikodam ve semach me Israel. Okay, semach. Well, it's not going to highlight for it. It highlights where you can see it like that there. Okay, that's the best I can do for you. That semach. Remember what semach is? Is that righteous branch, which Jesus is the righteous branch. And. So when we go back, and we'll do it over here so you can see it better in, in, in the highlighted portions here. He visited them and caused to sprout for Israel and from Aaron a shoot of the planting in order to possess his land and to become fat with the good things of his soil. Now this is written almost like a parable. And they realized their iniquity and knew that they were guilty men. Why did they know they were guilty men? Because of the the shoot, now the, you know they they translated it the way they did because they don't want you to realize it's Jesus that he's talking about. But they realized their iniquity and knew that they were guilty men. But they were like blind persons and like those who grope for a path over twenty years. And God appraised their deeds because they sought Him with an undivided heart. What did Jesus say also? Let's take and uh, let's just, just as a reminder, and this is what really helps us, right? When we can cross reference some of these things so you understand where I'm coming from on this. Okay? Remember the famous statement, the blind lead the blind? Matthew 15 14. And I won't do it over there, we'll just do it right here where you can see it faster. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. All right, so let's go back to the, to the Dead Sea Scroll again. They realized their iniquity and knew that they were guilty men, 
but they were like blind persons and like those who grope for a path. The blind leading the blind. Over 20 years, and God appraised their deeds because they sought him with an undivided heart and raised up for them a teacher of righteousness. The teacher of righteousness is that shoot of the planting or the tzemach. That righteous branch, in order to direct them in the path of his heart. And that's exactly what Jesus did, was to direct them in the path of his heart. And he made known to the last generations what he had done for the last generation, the congregation of traitors. And that's exactly what they did. They betrayed Jesus Christ. Judas did what the Pharisees betrayed Jesus Christ. You know, I think that's in the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's in the Hebrew Matthew that Judas actually knew the Pharisees. These are the ones who stray from, all right, now let's, let's go back. Stray from the path that is the time about which it has been written. Now this is where Hosea actually prophesied. Like a stray heifer, so Israel strayed when the scoffer arose who poured out over Israel. Waters of lies and made them stray into a wilderness without the path, causing the everlasting heights to sink down, diverging from tracks of justice and removing the boundary with which the forefathers had marked their inheritance. So that the curses of his covenant would adhere to them to deliver them up to the sword, carrying out the vengeance of the covenant. For they sought easy interpretations, choose illusions and scrutinize loopholes, chose the handsome neck, acquitted the guilty, and sentenced the just. Oh my gosh, do you see that? They acquitted the guilty and sentenced the just. There's your... Jesus and Barabbas, right there. There it is. Acquitted the guilty and condemned the just. You see how valuable that Dead Sea Scroll is right there? Chose the handsome neck, acquitted the guilty and sentenced the just. Violated the covenant broke the precept, banded together against the life of the just man. And this is exactly what they did. I mean, we read it in the Gospels. They persuaded the people to call out for the blood of Jesus Christ. And I didn't, I didn't take the time to pull all those scriptures together to prove that point, but we know that it's there. Any Christian knows that it's there. Their soul abominated all those who walk in perfection. They hunted them down with the sword and provoked the dispute of the people and kindled was the wrath of God against their congregation. And that's exactly what they did. They hunted down. The apostles were in fear after they crucified Jesus. Because, yeah, they were hunting them down with the sword and persecuting them and bringing them in. Laying waste all its great number for their deeds were unclean in front of him. Now, it gets interesting, even from that, just that part alone showing those that wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Damascus document writing about Jesus and Barabbas. I mean, do you, do you see that? And they quote it, and they actually show, this is from Hosea's prophecy, like a stray heifer, so as Israel strayed, when the scoffer arose, poured out over Israel, waters of lies, and made them stray into a wilderness without a path, causing the everlasting heights to sink down, diverging from the tracks of justice, and removing the boundary with which the forefathers marked their inheritance, so that the curses of this covenant would adhere to them, to deliver them up to the sword, carrying out the vengeance of the covenant. But they sought easy interpretations, chose illusions and scrutinized loopholes, chose the handsome neck and acquitted the guilty and sentenced the just. You know, I don't know how I see these things. I just do. I, for me, it's just like 
super easy. Now, it gets more interesting though. All right, I gotta show you this. Hmm. Let me let me just back up, make sure here. Let's see. All right, this next section here uh, that's not highlighted except for the top part is what we're gonna look at now on this page here. Continuing on. God against their congregation laying waste all its great number for their deeds were unclean in front of him. And now listen to me, all who enter the covenant, and I will open your ears to the paths of the wicked. Now he's going to show you how that the wicked pulled this off, killing Jesus. God loves knowledge. He has established wisdom and counsel before him. Let me blow this up. Prudent knowledge are at his service. Patience is in his abundance of pardon to atone for those who repent from sin. However, strength and power and great anger with flames of fire. By the hand of all the angels of destruction against those turning aside from the path of an abomination, abominating, excuse me, a path and abominating the precept. Notice he mentions the angels of destruction. That's during the times of Noah. That's how I ended up finding this. Without there being for them either a remnant or survivor, because God destroyed them during the flood, for God did not choose them at the beginning of the world, and before they were established, he knew their deeds, and abominated the generations on account of blood, hid his face from the land from Israel. Whoa. What? Why hiding their face from Israel? Let's see why. Until their extinction. And he knew the years of existence and the number and detail of their ages of all those who exist over the centuries and those who will exist. Okay, now let's stop for a minute and think for a second what we just read here. He's talking about the angels of destruction. He's talking about the Nephilim, the fallen ones, the children of them. Now he's telling you that God did not choose them from the beginning of the world, but he's also letting you know he knows about all their generations. And even though he says without there being for them either a remnant or a survivor. But he lets you know they come on down through time. He says he knew the years of existence and the number of detail of their ages, which we read about them as I just showed you over in the book of Numbers. Joshua seeing them when they come into the land of Israel, the giants that they're having to encounter. He said... Of all those who exist, which meant currently right then and there they were existing, which would have been during the times of Jesus, because when this document is written, Jesus has already been crucified. That is 100% clear by the fact that it says that they condemned the just and freed the guilty. And those who will exist, woe. You're talking about Nephilim after Jesus' time period? According to this, it says it will be. Until it occurs in their ages throughout all the everlasting years, and in all of them he raised up men of renown for himself to leave a remnant for the land in order to, to fill the face of the whole world with their offspring. you got to be kidding me. He raised up men of renown for himself to leave a remnant for the land in order to fill the face of the whole world with their offspring. And he taught them by the hand of the anointed ones and with his Holy Spirit and through seers of the truth. And their names were established with precision. But those he hates, he causes to stray. And now, sons, listen to me, and I shall open your eyes so that you can see and understand the deeds of God so that you can choose what he is pleased with and repudiate what he hates so that you can walk perfectly 
on all his paths and not allow yourselves to be attracted by the thoughts of a guilty inclination and lascivious eyes. For many have gone astray due to these brave heroes, stumbled on account of them from the ancient times until now. For having walked in the stubbornness of their heart, the watchers of heavens fell on the account of it. They were caught, for they did not heed the precepts of God. But did you notice they would be here? They did not only exist during the times of when Jesus and Barabbas were being condemned, but will exist in a future time frame as well. No wonder then we read in the book of Matthew, uh, if we were to go over to the book of Matthew real quick, in chapter 23, and we're fixing to close here, Chapter 23, um, Jesus said, You appear to be righteously, uh, outwardly righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers of with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore be you witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. What does he call them? You serpents. You generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? He calls the Pharisees that. But yet Aliad Sheikh, uh, you know, she sits there and, and and this is interesting, right? This is a, this is a commercial she's in. she's in. She is the uh, former justice minister for Neftali Bennett, and yet she's in this commercial they come out with for his perfume called Fascism. Isn't that interesting? Aliad Sheikh, former justice minister of Israel, in a commercial for a perfume called Fascism. I guess they're going to come out with one next called Nazism. And she's the very one that called the Palestinians a bunch of little snakes. Calling for the death of the mothers just because their sons may have committed crimes against the state of Israel. Then she says smells more like democracy. So I guess fascism smells like democracy. Is that really the, the, the point that's to be taken away from this? You decide. Nonetheless, the Dead Sea Scrolls clearly, clearly, and let me come back over here to this here. Let me, let me, let me, let me back up back here on here. Let me come back. Um, we are in 19. Loopholes. Chose the handsome neck, acquitted the guilty, and sentenced the just. Right? There, there you have it right there. Let's, let's see. We're in... Um, trying to see if I could find that for you real quick. Uh, I had to take more time to find that, and I was just wanting to read it over here in Hebrew for you just to see there. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. <laughs> wow. Sure enough. Here they have Actually, it says the evil. Rasha ah ve yeshu sedach. So they they acquitted, or they they pardoned. The good man is pardoned, and instead, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. The good man is is the one that they find guilty, and the evil man, and the the evil uh, the evil man is the one they end up set just just like it says in English there. Pretty much, I mean, it's an easy way to translate that there. So I wanted to share that with you. I'm going to go deeper into this. There's still a whole lot more to read in that Damascus document. And I also found another very interesting uh, part in the Damascus document as well, where they talk about making the community in Damascus, which was the early believers of Jesus. So again, it appears to be that the Zedekite priesthood that were writing about these things were followers. Of Jesus Christ. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here on our Patreon channel. Thank you for being a part here with us, and God bless you, and thank you for your support. 
Uh, we do need your, your help and support, so if you want to help uh, even more, uh, you're able to go to our website. Clicking online to donate is also a big help for us, or by mail, which is always above our head here. Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box uh, uh, 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. God bless you.